So I'm going to close my iPad here. I've been playing this game on uh, iPad. <laughs> it's called Outlanders and I love it. Like it's just, it's kind of mindless, but there's a little bit of a challenge to it. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's one of those like village builder, community builder kind of games. Oh yeah. 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 I love those. Lately, that's what I like. I uh, I have rarely ever played video games. You know, it, I feel like it's like pinball. Maybe is it's more a fun for me. We have we have a pinball over there. I know. But I'm, I'm not. <laughs> You're there, not here. Come play. <laughs> come play the pinball. No, that's I. I'm a I I am a gamer, but I'm not like. I don't know. I I don't know. I feel like you either you you kind of like them or you don't. But everybody has their like niches i guess but yeah i think maybe early on because i'm so immersible i uh i had a buddy who knows 20 at least 20 years ago whenever duke nukem first came out yeah i remember that remember one duke nukem i do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so intense yeah and i got and i felt my heart racing like I was so easily immersible in Duke Nukem right and it's not it's not like Duke Nukem was crossing any uncanny valley right 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 well that a pure pure shooter for first person pure first person shooter game but I got so stressed out yeah. playing it and I know that's the point for some people they want that adrenaline not and, for me uh, no it was, it, and so then it was like, wow, I could really get uh, lost. And then this would be terrible for my health. <laughs> That's a, you know, here's a, a funny one. We, uh, we went to Wisconsin a week or two ago. Uh, time is all a blur, but so, and on the flight, like sometimes on flights, I'll be more or less productive, but like this time I was like, I'm with my kids. I'm just going to play games like during the the flight and so I I've been playing um this one called cookie run kingdom with my daughter and like so she plays on her phone I play on mine and we compare notes all the time and, oh did you get the new thing but it doesn't work without a connection and our flight didn't have wi-fi so oh. I like they told us before we boarded you know like with well, this flight wi-fi is down so if you need anything download it now so i was like downloaded a bunch of games and i i got the uh the candy crush which i had played many years ago i i kind of you know back when where i was building apps and stuff like you download everything and try everything right like and yeah, just absolutely. see and you know the onboarding process of games is something i am deeply obsessed with um, because I think it applies to, well, a lot of things, life and other apps and, and whatnot. But um, so onboarding processes I'm obsessed with in games in particular. And Candy Crush was one that I'd played for a long, long time. And then, I don't know, somewhere along the way, totally deleted and moved on. And I downloaded it for this flight and I was obsessed with it until about two days ago, I was finally like, screw this like i have spent so much time on this game and i don't buy any of the upgrades or anything like that so there's always like if you don't pass a level you get like five tries and then it's like now you gotta wait 20 minutes and i was doing that and i you know and i'm like what am i doing i've wasted days on this thing and it was fun at first and then it just became frustrating so i just deleted it i was like okay this one's out of my life <laughs> Yeah, we are. Uh, it's medication of sorts, right? It's just it, it is. It's just to remove us from ambient reality. Yep. Yep. And no, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> no, no, it's it's to it's a medication, and you know we could read a book. We could. It's like then there there is a point where because this is all we have, right? This moment, like what do I want to keep putting in? Yeah. And I had a, I had a few realizations this week. I was hoping I would remember them for my conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Everything's fleeting. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, one of them was, I was, uh, 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 I was tired of being afraid of the future. Oh, 
Nice. That's a nice one. Right. Because, yeah. because all of the thinking about what we have to do or what we need to do or what's in front of us, it's not there yet, right? The future isn't here. And so all of that thinking is such a waste of energy, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's I mean, you can, sure, like you're going on a road trip, you need to have a list of things you have Some to bring. But, planning and right. preparation, sure. Sure, you, you know those things are in front of you, but then there is the constant imagining of what could happen, what might happen, especially with regards to vocation, personal expression, like what am I gonna do with my life? Where's my income gonna come from? Who are the people who are going to help me get there? What's what are the things that are, you know, that kind of thinking, or trying to manage it or predict it, um, takes me away from actually being free right now, free to see if there's an opportunity, free to feel something that will move me in the right direction, move me in a direction that's more a more accurate, let's say path so of expression yeah so that was one and the, the way i realized it was i was what was it i had there were just things to do things that costed money i was like shopping for shopping for supplements and i was spending so much time trying to reduce get the you know get the price down and i thought this is just stupid, right? <laughs> like, right? Like, like I've spent, you know, I've spent, you know, $200 on a dinner that sucked, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right. And you, you blow, you blow that money. And then it's like, and I know these things are good for me. And yet I'm still shopping around for them because I am hedging my bet against the future, right? Like yeah. I'm trying to get the cheapest price. And, um, Wow. You know, and that's, and that, I, I think that's what the, the video, you know, it's like, I'm creating a problem that doesn't need to exist, right? Like yeah. I have to shop for the cheapest supplement, or I have to get the best deal on my trailer hitch for my car. Yeah. Or I have to install it myself because I don't want to pay somebody because, but then in the end, that time is that that could be a very creative or productive time for me, right? Like, yeah. And also, I had such a great experience uh, doing this with you uh, last week, right? Like, we're, yes. we're actually focusing on things that are positive in a very clear way and, and broadly, though, that I, I realized, well, do I want to be um, you know, how often do I want to keep distracting myself with what TV shows, what, mm -hmm. like, where do I want to put my focus? That's an, a super interesting one. And I, I'm sorry if I truncated your thought right in the middle no, of your keep, sentence go, there, but take it. it. It's so much, um, I feel like I'm I very parallel space in thinking right now. You know, there's, especially, something that we talked about that we have in common is our sort of like somebody asks you what do you do it's a difficult response we wear a lot of hats we're capable of a lot of things we have a lot of variety in our background you know in our toolkits and and so like for me i i do i, I i'm trying to find the way in letting myself sort of feel my way through things without a lot of stress and pressure and see where it takes me yet innately. And I don't know if this is just like culturally who we are or what we've become, but like, there's this need to like, I feel the stress of like, Ooh, I am enjoying playing this game, but I'm burning time. What else could I be doing with this time? And I, I allow myself to be, um, sort of stressed out by that. And then also kind of tying into some of the other things that you were saying, it's like that, that the worry about what might happen 
like what, you know, where I'm fine right now, but maybe in 10 months, I won't be, um, if I, if I just stay on the same trajectory and I don't get a, you know, some sort of income figured out, (laughs) then I might be scrambling, you know, to, to figure something out. And I might have to take something that I don't want to take because I've squandered time. Like I, I worry about that. And I don't know if that's completely in parallel, but Yes, for sure, because the it's the it's like where do we take all of this hard won wisdom, right? And who right. will see it, and who will or and who will recognize it? And do I even recognize it, right? Am I? Um, and the so there's that like you're we're we're hedge always hedging our bet against the future always and sometimes you win and sometimes you lose and that's that's a reality but at the same time our work and our background everything that we've done prior to now has led us to this point of a really beautiful space of freedom a freedom of of time to choose time to think time to actually reflect a little bit, time to play games or whatever. And I don't want to lose that. Like, I I don't want to lose it, but am I working hard enough to maintain it is the question I always ask myself. Well, the, I think the working hard enough is a uh, judgment that is not, uh, one, it's not fair. Two, I don't think it's useful because the the point of having arrived here with all this wisdom and experience <laughs> is, um, is how do I recognize right um, when I'm in the stream when I'm floating downstream right the point is to be in the flow and be going downstream that's not work work is paddling upstream looking for something i might have missed or trying to recapture another moment or work is standing on the side of the stream looking downstream making sure being afraid of maybe obstacles or something that might be in the way or right like the and so the trick now is how do I make my life easier, right? Like, how do I bring more joy, more love, more creativity, the things that I am um, good at, how do I bring more of those things to life? And it's not, and the, the working hard is a dirty trick it is i totally agree with that like and i and i kind of remember at some point i mean i I think i did a blog post about it at some point because i i kind of remember i'm gonna derail a little bit here uh a while back ken and i had a conversation about or like i remember this moment of realization where I understood that like maybe the limitation of my parents' knowledge and where maybe I was starting to surpass what my parents were able to teach me. Like, if that makes sense, I was, you know, traveling the world and taking in new things that I'd never experienced and that my parents had never experienced. And not so much that I'm smarter than my parents, but I had kind of outlearned what they had learned. And so I was, anyway, so there's that aspect of it. And, and in that, you know, my parents taught me to work hard, great work ethic, but uh, somewhere along the way, the realization of work smarter, not harder, or work smarter and harder, um, it became a different understanding to me was like, I I can actually, you know, the, the, the best I've ever done in my life financially, I worked the fewest hours, like actually worked or logged, Mm -hmm. whatever the fewest hours. And I think like, there's some magic to that, right? Like it was like, I had finally figured out how to like own my time and be financially rewarded, but the financial aspect was completely 
left of, of vision. You know, it was just not in the periphery at all. Like my focus was, I want to do something I care about. I want to spend time with people I care about doing things I care about. And, and that was like my focus and you get knocked off that track every now and then, you know, <laughs> but I, I had like a really good, uh, run of that for a while, which helped fuel future freedom. And so I don't know if I'm so much trying to find that again, but, but sort of right. Like try to find whatever I was in that got me to that place at that time was a really moment of clarity. Yeah. you um, You were swimming downstream. It was, it was great. And then, you know, you get kind of bumped along the walls there and, and you kind of go, whoa, wait, um, you know, it's easy to be taken in and sort of knocked off track. Um, and I've been knocked off track, uh, like for years now, you know, and, and I find my, my groove every now and then, but then again, it's like, I bunk into the walls and have to re I don't know, refocus. Well, well, again, um, turning, I would say you, you, there are many points where you were definitely right. Swimming downstream. Right. And, and I definitely have similar experiences. One of those experiences was working with you and Ken at black pixel. Yeah. Right. When we worked together, I felt like, and there was Chris Markle and there was Mike yeah. Hay and there was Doug and there were all of these people yeah. who I just thought these guys are the best in the world at what they do, Bill and, yeah. right these guys are really gangsters they're yeah. really they really know what they're doing even if they don't even think they know what they're doing everybody <laughs> around them knows that they're the shit and then i thought that when you and i were pitching something i thought that we could do anything like yeah. that like 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 our particular team could do anything that anybody needed to do yeah and I, I was well rewarded over time for that. And I was a real believer. And I believed from the beginning at a really high level of uh, belief. But that wasn't the point of this ramble here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that wasn't the ultimate point. I, I think that the thing that I wanted to add, though, is that the judgment of track and off track yeah. Is also it's also useless. That's so interesting, and that's you are on track. We're here. <laughs> we are here. We are so in the moment. Yeah. Right. That there's and the, the thing is is if we could if we could create this sense of being in the moment and and um, understanding ourselves better all day long, right? Like not as work, but just as a curiosity, as a joy, as a pursuit. And then in every interaction, we're interacting from with other people from this place of openness, joy, curiosity. Think of the things that will get pulled in, right? But you can't, we can't stay at home, right? We can't stay at home uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, not interacting with the world, right? You have to jump right. in and jump in almost, you can jump in almost anywhere if we can leave the judgment behind. Uh, I was listening to uh, David Hawkins this morning. Just, uh, I'm reading Power Versus Force. Okay, yeah. And um, he's talking about the different levels of consciousness. And uh, at the point, uh, at the, I can't remember which level this is, but there is a point at which you can do anything and it doesn't matter, right? Like the, it doesn't matter because you're present, you're in joy, you're expressing yourself. You don't care what it's called because you have love, you have, um, you have peace, you're not judging yourself. And so if you don't judge yourself, 
um, then you're pretty much free of letting others judge you, right? Like you can, yeah. like, right? Because the only reason we feel judged is because we accept the judgment that others put on us, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. And so if we don't accept self judgment anymore, then nobody can really place it upon us. And so then these things of like, wasting time or like the moment you think you're wasting time is probably the time to go take a nap yeah that's that's actually a really interesting thought you know it's like you know what but yeah i do find i find myself you know i uh this is interesting that like i this is sort of a shift again but i like passive noise like in, in my environment like I like a lot of noise. I feel like it allows me the freedom to focus. And it's almost like by blocking out whatever's on, I can focus on whatever it is I want to focus on. And I was curious if you ever do stuff like that. Oh, you mentioned shows. And I think that's what like what I think of when I, I watch shows. I'm always doing something else when I'm watching shows. And oh, I yeah. don't know if that's like, you know, again, it's, it's like, I love having shows on and I will rewatch things over and over because I don't fully immerse in them the first time through or a second or third, cause I'm always doing something else. I'm writing or I'm whatever I'm doing things working sometimes, but I like the, the passiveness of that sound being on. It's like comforting and relaxing to me. Um, and so I'll always like turn on a thing. This is another judgment thing. I'll like spend 20 minutes looking for the right something to have on in the background that I don't pay attention to, <laughs> but I, I've recently kind of started even letting go of that. Right. Like, it's like, um, I just turn on quite literally, like if it's Netflix or whatever, I'll just like Netflix will be like, here, watch this today. And I'll turn that on. And often it's fine as long as it doesn't have some real distracting moments or whatever that pull me out mm -hmm. of whatever I'm in. But I, I do that often. Like I don't even care what's on. I just poke the first button that shows up and turn it on. And then I do my thing. I don't know. Wow. A whole mess of yeah. thoughts, but, but yeah, I don't know. Do you ever do, uh, do you ever have, well, like, how are you with noise? Well, I, I live in the city. I mean, I live in the heart of the city. I mean, there could be anything from jackhammers in the morning to sirens at night to uh, seagulls pooping on my deck. I mean, it's <laughs> the nature. It's the nature of, um, of living in the center of the city. And I could, um, when I lived on a busier street, I'm on the actually back side of the building. I'm actually on the quiet side of the building now that I've moved. But uh, years ago, I lived in a building called the Marlboro House on on Boren Avenue, which is a very busy street, and it's on uh, in the neighborhood uh, of First Hill, or this. It's known as Pill Hill. So all the hospitals are there. So all the ambulances are going up Boren and down Boren all the time. And I could sleep there. I have the windows open. I was on the 10th floor. I have the windows open. I could sleep and work and do things there. I have the ability to tune that out and the, I have the ability to do, like I'll have, if there's a show on network television, I'm always doing stuff, right? Yeah. There's the phone or the computer. I'm always doing stuff um, because I'm not going to sit through a commercial, right? Gonna, <laughs> yeah. I have to be pretty tired, right? Or, but that's the thing about, that's the thing about Netflix or Apple TV or any streaming service. You don't sit through the commercial. So it's easier to get uh, immersed, especially if you have a, for me, if I have a, an attachment to the story or the characters, yeah. then I won't, right? Then I, then I'll really, I will immerse myself, but it has to be really good. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I do. I have a couple that I'll do that with, but it's rare. It's rare. Yeah. But that, that I think is our mind craves stimulation, right? Our, we do have, 
our mind is constantly, that is the nature of the mind, right? It is to be uh, active. It, it wants to be catalytic. It wants to take in information. It's curious. It is recomposing and composing and judging. And so, you know, maybe, maybe you have such a high capacity or such a high <laughs> activation level, right? That it takes, you know, it takes a certain amount to get you going. It definitely. Right? I mean, I don't know if that's a like high or, or whatever. It might just be, it might even be extra low level. I don't, I don't know, but I do know that like, I feel like I function better when there's noise but not something that requires my attention. So this is something, you know, it's different if I've got kids home or here, you know, here or whatever, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, mom, um, you know, like it's different, you know, obviously that demands your focus and your attention. And that's, and that's a good thing. And I yeah. like to be able to, to give it and, and actually do it. And sometimes I actually find that in instances where it might require my full attention, maybe I'm less uh, strong at that because I'm always so divided and I don't know if that's the because but I'm used to being so divided that like yeah focusing on something is actually a little challenging that's yeah well I think I think that uh, I, th I think with an active mind that's probably we suffer. From we suffer. <laughs> I feel like that's we so complimentary. That. It's such a complimentary way of saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, but it's ADHD. This is our modern it, adult ADHD. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, I was never diagnosed with anything like that. But I do. I've always wondered if maybe I have whatever that is. And I just have found my own way of, of working with it. You know, you it's like anything sure. like grief or, or anything, right? Like you you have these things that compose who you are and figuring out how to function with them or despite them or in spite of them or whatever. Yes. Um, yeah. I feel like grief is a similar thing that we like, it's like we throw it in the backpack and we keep hiking, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's always there. Um, but yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is, you know, with things like grief and those pain and suffering, those things that you do have, like, you are carrying it and you can let go of it, right? But it, it takes, you have to transition to higher levels of, um, of feeling to let it go, right? You have to go from grief to maybe anger, right? Through the little, or, the process right? of- You have yeah, to right? go through the loop, right? You know, and then and then you have to then you have to nurture and love yourself to what to to whatever that next level is. You know, this is this is, kind of calls back to our last week's conversation, or maybe two weeks ago, but like the 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 topic of letting go. And I I I know I'm a little all over the place during this conversation, but like the the letting go, it all what you were just talking about comes back to that. So many things come back to your ability to let go and what we're able to let go of in order mm -hmm. to keep moving forward, right? And to grow in any capacity, we have to unload some stuff, I think. And, yes. you know, I've, I've had a couple moments where, man, I, I was sort of a, a, you know, a weird one, but like had a, I, I had a massage earlier. I want to say it was earlier this year, but maybe late last year. Timing doesn't matter, but I remember um, very specifically something that I have been, I'd been kind of holding on a little hurt from an experience from the past with, a, with someone. And I just remember like, there was a very clear defining moment where I was like, I let go of that. It's done. It's gone. I mm -hmm. officially am free of that piece. And then you mentioned, you know, that you were going through this sort of audiobook and kind of go, yep, I can let go of that. Yep, I can go let go of that. And yes. I um I want to become better at letting go of things that are gravity. You know, I mean, there's like a lot of gravity to holding on to things. And I'm a really good hold oner, it turns out. <laughs> but I would like to be a better let letter goer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's one, it, it, I would say, um, 
look to your that experience of where you know that you let something go right what you just told me that you you had that experience where you know you let that thing go yeah you it know was it's gone. very you know definitive it's gone. Yep. yes and um those things the in physiologically in our bodies they are definitive like the um in the biofeedback work i've done uh when you let something go it is instant like there is a physiological yes. boom that uh, things in your body change immediately that it's was a, exactly what i felt and i hadn't experienced it in that way before ever yeah well maybe i'm it, just carrying a lot i don't know <laughs> well the bigger the thing the bigger the thing and the more you know you can let go of little bits and pieces but the the um you know there's i have a bunch of tricks there's one you know that there's something called the sedona method there is tapping um uh, which is called EFT, emotional freedom technique. There are all kinds of uh, techniques. Um, the tapping involves tapping on a bunch of um, ac maybe seven different acupressure points uh, while you while you repeat the the version that I know is you repeat I love and accept myself even though boom and you name it even though. I want to murder my dad. I love <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I love to myself, even though I'm hating myself right now. I love and accept myself, even though I feel I'm unproductive. I love and accept myself, even though I had a really bad experience with a family member. Uh, and you can get more and more specific or more and more granular, uh, or you can get really broad. Right? Here's a question. But with that st with that statement i love and accept myself even though i have this heavy thing like what if <laughs> the perception of uh is it directly linked all the time like what if i feel like i love and accept myself just fine but i'm hanging is it are the two always ex like connected like can you feel like you love and accept yourself and have this heavy thing or yep. if you truly love and accept yourself would that be impossible to have these gravity? Well, well, no, it's a choice to hang on. You can love and accept yourself and hang on. Uh -huh. Okay. That right? is, is just a curious, right? yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, you can love and accept yourself and hang on. But if you love and accept yourself and want your full freedom, right? Like I love and accept myself and I want my freedom. Be, I love and accept myself because I want my freedom. Right, and that you go through a whole sequence of tapping, um, and the last one is just tapping on the spot between your nose and your upper lip. But it's I've done this, you know, tens of thousands of times over many years. So now it's like, really, it's like, do I want to let this go? And do am I loving and accepting myself right now for having this? What is really not a fun or beneficial is this feeling you know you can start with a whole the Sedona method starts with a whole series you know of questions is is this feeling beneficial right like do I you know uh is it is it wanting control is it wanting approval is it wanting um separation from others right what is this feeling wanting do i do i want it do i believe i can let it go okay if i believe i can let it go then uh when do i want to let it go today tomorrow in a minute right and you can ask yourself all those questions or and then it's like well if it's in if it's tomorrow why not now yeah right? and so then these things go and i early on I learned how some of this worked. Uh, I had a friend of mine uh, who knew somebody who was in uh, in uh, was an auditor for the what's Tom Cruise's crazy religion? Oh, the Scientology. Right, the Scientologists have this thing 
uh, called auditing. And they run, they run you through these questions and they, they, they have a way of releasing and it's actually done with a biofeedback device. It's a, um, some kind of, they call an audit, auditing device, but basically it is a galvanic skin response tester. So it tells, you basically put these two uh, um, metal tubes in your hands and they're connected to uh, an ohm meter and it's detecting, it's very highly sensitive and it's detecting the amount of sweat and resistance that's in your body between your two hands. So electrical wow. circuit. And so the moment you decide through this auditing process, you know, they run down certain issues. The moment you decide to let something go, the, ne the needle on the meter just swings wildly. Like the resistance just complete, like literally the electrical resistance becomes hmm. that's loose, wild. right? Yeah. It's like, it's, and so that's how you, that's uh, how you uh, learn in a mechanical fashion that things in the body are changing instantaneously. That's how I learned it. Yeah. So, you know, obviously that method is um, maybe for the, for the people who may not believe so much, right? Because all of a sudden you have electrical feedback on a device that is, it's a pretty simple device. It's not, it's not anything sophisticated. It's a very simple, basic form of biofeedback. And Tibetan yogis and Indian, you know, yogis have been doing this type of, let's say, uh, research for years, right? They yeah. can control their body temperature. They can, you know, they understand how these things work in the body, but they, they didn't need an electrical instrument to tell them. Right. It's... And, this, and the same with you, you experienced this letting go and you didn't need an instrument to get there. I was, you know, this was in my 20s that I was going through these things and meeting these people who were way out on the fringe. And frankly, I was around a lot of people who had these technologies, we'll call them technologies, um, these releasing technologies and healing technologies. And they, um, because they weren't healed or clear themselves, a lot of these things were abused. And that's yeah. what happened. That's what happened. That, that's, you know, as far as I can tell from the outside, that's what's happening in the Church of Scientology. I feel right? like that they is have, every church. Very, <laughs> well, exactly. But the Church of Scientology has uh, some technology that's very powerful and can be used to get people to let go enough and build trust so that the people who are doing this auditing and the people like that you you all of a sudden people are revealing things that are very personal and that can be used against them and in some cases it might be being used against them or you are if you are stuck in this community where these are the only people who know your secrets right it becomes yeah. a little dangerous because those people aren't necessarily um they, they may not have the best motivations yeah things get filtered by bad people all the time maybe that is a yeah unfair word but well, people who the, are aligned with different things than yes the, you might be well and that's the thing is that, uh, we have to be and that's the thing i learned during this period of my life where i was seeking i was so um broken in my own mind right that that i was seeking out all of the gurus and the healing technologies and spending money and traveling and sitting at satsang with different characters and seeing a lot of confusion around me but also allowing myself to be manipulated and then and then facing situations where I thought, and I knew I was really clear, but I had people around me telling me I was wrong, right? Oh, like, wow. Right, that I was wrong for saying what I said, I was wrong for expressing myself in a certain way, 
and then that became that became its own problem right that yeah. that became right that became another thing to heal i mean it pushed me deeper but also i knew i couldn't do it in those communities that's um that's an interesting element that i feel like i relate to also is that i I don't know. Do you find yourself working through things by yourself a lot because you don't, I don't want, I don't know if belong is the right word. I'm having a hard time finding words that, that kind of really clearly define what I'm thinking here, but it's like, you know, I've spent a lot of time in like yoga communities and um, even in like coaching and po positivity, Tony Robbins type stuff. And yeah. while I can see a lot of the benefit. Um, and I can see how it affects a lot of people who are there and who are able to fully immerse in the experience. I have always felt like an observer. I don't feel like I can, like, I, I don't, but it, Tony Robbins, let's use that as a, an example. He does a he lot of wonderful great, things, great wonderful example. things for wonderful, you know, you, you see a lot of wonderful things happen, but like I went to a Tony Robbins event some years ago, say 2014, 2015. And I, um, and it was when I was kind of reconstructing my own, you know, life, um, redesigning my life. And, you know, it was just one of those things where I, I wanted to see how people who coached, how they helped other people work through their stuff, because they felt like there's a lot of insight there. There's a lot of tools that work, but I never felt like it worked on me. The thing that works on me is me me understanding that I have control and that yes. I can change things, but observing, observing so many people letting go, it's beautiful that they've found something that works for them. You know, like going to a Tony Robbins seminar and everybody connecting in that way. Yet I have always felt like this, that's great for you. I'm going to stay over here and watch <laughs> and I feel fine. I don't feel upset yeah. that I'm not connecting. It's just not for me. And a lot of different kinds of yoga, I felt that way as well. Like I'm, you know, uncomfortable, maybe chanting or making weird faces or, uh, you know, like doing some of the things that they want you to do. I'm like, that's not me. Like I appreciate it. And I understand the value of a lot of it. And I've tried many things just to see, like, does it help me in some way that this doesn't? But I, I do find that that like at the end of the day, it's kind of like it's already in here. Like that. yes, that's exactly the point. That is the point. And the the Tony, <laughs> I mean, everything you said uh, is exactly uh, is exactly right. It's like it's not the. It is. We have everything we need in us right we are we are the arbiters of right and wrong no one can judge us for that we are um right i mean there is a societal norm but in the end uh, everyone and this is the this is the thing all of these groups whether it's tony robbins or whether it's scientology or whether it's the catholic church right? Everyone wants to belong. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to know that they're doing the right thing by themselves, uh, yeah. for themselves or for their family or, but in the end, the path to our full expression, it, it goes through us. It's in us. And because we are already connected to everything around us, we're already connected there is no there is no separation between us and the natural world and the and reality right we're connected to all of it and and it's the it's the reason when you let go of some something from the past that there's a physiological response because you are connected in a way that isn't material right like we are connected to the non-material universe right which is vast and ineffable 
and we're, we're already connected to it. And we create things out of it all the time, right? We're yeah. creating fantasy, we're creating art, we're creating businesses, we're, and it's coming through us. And that, um, I have felt that wanting to, and this is my whole, my whole search in my 20s was to find a group that in which I felt comfortable. And what I found was that I kept feeling more uncomfortable around people who were. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it yeah. Like, it was like, because, because what they were looking for, uh, they were also looking to be um, connected right but they were looking for an answer so that they wouldn't have to think anymore right like they're they're like i want the path so that i know that i'm doing the right thing well the thing is is that's changing all the time right yeah. what's right for us and we are evolving that is the nature of being human it's changing all the time it, there's more input there's more to create and because we are creative beings you can't just keep creating the same thing. Yeah. Right? You have to create, you have to create more. New. No, that's interesting. Okay. So this ties into a couple things that like, you know, there's the work parallel for me that, um, so like he, we worked together at a, at a place where we were both very happy. And when we started there, it was one thing. And then by the time we both left, so like when people ask me, I often will reflect on that experience and I'll say, you know, when I started, it was very aligned with my values and what I needed at that time. And by the time I left, it's not that it was bad or terrible place. It was just that where I was at no longer aligned with the values of the company. Like we, we had diverged at some point. So it's like, we were very aligned to a certain point and then the paths diverged, whether that's me or them, doesn't really matter. It's just knowing that it was time to move in a new direction for yes. me was everything, you know? And, and I feel like that's very much in like the redesign of life, right? Like I went through, after my dad passed away, I left that job about a year later, you and I had some very deep, very great conversations that I value so much still today, but you know, it, it's like, and then I went through this whole life redesign and beautiful things came out of it. But then I find that just because you did it once before doesn't mean that you're done. Like you have to constantly go through it. And even though the tools that have surfaced from going through that have worked, you, you're at a different level every time. So it's like, you can kind of use the same tools, but the project is different. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. The, and the thing is, so that's the creative nature of being human, right? Like, um, there you're never satisfied, right? <laughs> yeah. And if if you were satisfied, if you, I mean, the point, if you were satisfied, it would be a very high spiritual state, or you would be dead, right? Like, <laughs> like, like, like the it's the old Caddyshack thing where the where uh, the Dalai Lama tells Bill Murray, on your deathbed, you will receive total consciousness, right? <laughs> yeah. show, I, show I got that going for me. <laughs> right? So, right, but so, but why wait till you're dead, right? To, right. to, to, have, this, to have this really high experience of, of, um, of transcending all of these, uh, um, well, let's say the need to belong or the need to find at the answer because there isn't the answer. No, there isn't. I, I, I don't is. believe there is. Yeah. Yeah. And so then it's, then it's the, then it is the nature of being human is catalytic. It's creative. It's curious it is constructive, it is destructive, right? And so then it's like, well, where, where am I going to jump into the stream, right? And so, and that, or that kind of ties into like the other half of what I was thinking 
which is, I, I guess, in its simplest form, the value of having new experiences, right? Um, like you were talking, like you don't reach a point where you're just done, hopefully, like, I mean, until you're dead, but like, you know, hopefully your curiosity and your creativity is what feeds your, your forward movement, your progression. Um, hopefully it's progression. Um, but that yeah. was something, oh, go ahead. go ahead. Well, I think that's all there is, is progression. Uh, unless you shut down, if you keep, if you keep, if we keep, or if I keep focusing on joy, yeah. right? Because this, those things that brought me joy when I was younger, they can still bring me joy, but I want more, right? I want it more in all the areas of my life, right? I, I want, and I want to be around people, who, right? The, because the thing that's so great about this, what we're doing here, is we are, one, we're present, and two, we are only talking about things that are expansive for us, right? And so it's what our, it's what my mind loves, right? Like I, yeah. I want to see more of what's out there. I want to exercise my creativity in that greater space. I want to uh, feel more joy every day. Right? And so I'm, you know, and so thank you for, you know, receiving my, my, these thank affirmations. You. <laughs> but we're doing this. And then, you know, as opposed to like last night, I watched a bunch of episodes of the Lincoln lawyer. Um, oh, on uh, Netflix or Apple TV or wherever it was. <laughs> Which is great though, right? I mean. But it's not this. Yeah, it's right? different it's though. Not even it's, it's not even close. You know what though? Here's something that I have to it's say I love is, you know, you define what's a valuable experience for you, right? And there's yes. nothing wrong with having, um, you know, I, I do feel like a, a lot of, a lot of communities will shun <laughs> my iPad games or whatever. I say, you know, waste time on games or whatever you want to call it. But like, I enjoy those games. They are soothing for my mind and yes. whatever they are, whatever. But um, I find that it gives me time. It's almost like that, that the thing of having noise running in the background, right? Like there's this sort of ambiance which allows me to focus on other things. Other things are churning inside while I'm playing games. This is why I don't like like games that really require full focus. I, I, don't, I don't have any interest in those right now. Like, yeah, you know, Outlanders is great because you, yeah, there's thinking involved and you're, you're in it to a degree, but not so much that I can't be dealing with other things that are going on in here. And that's what I like. I like a game that allows me to put some passive focus on it while other things are sort of floating around and, and, and resolving in a lot of ways. And, and so, yeah, giving myself permission to do that has been, it, it is, it continues to be an ongoing struggle. I do it, I do it anyway, but I feel the constant struggle of judgment, self-judgment and, oh, and perceived yeah. judgment, you know, it's like, oh, that's something I put on Ken, who's never once made even the lightest comment about, oh, you're gaming again, never once. He, he games too, you know, he's never mm -hmm. judged me, but for whatever reason in my mind, if I'm sitting on the couch in front of the TV, playing a game, you know, I got all this stuff, not, not really doing anything productive. And he walks out to grab a, you know, water or something. And I, I see him see me and in, immediately I feel like, oh my God, he's judging my laziness, yeah. you know, like I feel that, but I'm projecting that, not him. He's never once given me any reason to think he would yes. think that, you know, and it's just, my dad used to judge. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. So you can let go of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I can. Right. Like, and I've been working on it, but boy, is that a, 
a stupid ongoing one that I just feel like I really struggle with that. And I really do want to move past it. And I have good moments and, and less strong moments, but. Okay. I love and accept myself, <laughs> even though I have this stupid judgment about, <laughs> I have this stupid judgment stupid. about playing, wasting time playing video games. Right? I love and accept myself, even though I'm holding <laughs> on to this stupid judgment about playing video games. I love it except myself. Even I love that we can laugh about it. Playing it, video games is a stupid waste of time. <laughs> it's ridiculous to feel that. And I, it is like even saying it out loud, it's, it's like, it is pretty silly that I would feel that and have no reason to really. But, sorry. <laughs> Hang on. I'm yeah, no worries. A, I'm getting a scammer call. So oh, I, just, I love those. I, I just sent that away. I like how uh, T-Mobile and AT and T they they uh, tag they tag it with scam likely. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I love those. So that's I get the those. caller. The caller is scam likely. <laughs> that's so funny. I get those. I uh, I think my uh, subscription to the robo killer or whatever expired because I very recently started getting a lot of spam calls again. You have to pay for it? There is one that's a pay uh, pay oh. subscription. It really squashes, <laughs> it really squashes oh, yeah. like all of them. Um, I used to get a lot that came through still, um, oh, yeah. but yeah. But there was an iPhone one that I was subscribing to. Maybe I don't need to anymore. <laughs> they may have given up. <laughs> not not <laughs> probably not oh man so, so so we were on the letting on the go, letting but, go but it is but is that's the thing again we are again we are the arbiters of everything in our own lives right and so yeah. the kind thing to do would be to say you do whatever you need to do to get through the day and then when you wake up, decide what you want to experience that day, right? And then yeah. it's like every day, every day is like that. And every day is new in a way, unless we decide to hang on to these judgments and these uh, um, habituated ways of thinking about ourselves, right? Because most of the way we think about ourselves is base, is habituation. Very much so. and. It is an interesting, um, I guess, an ongoing challenge of letting go, letting go, letting go, and and trying to also have new experiences that let new creativity breed in here. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the other thing you reminded me of is the the point of not doing, right? The point of watching a TV show or something. Uh, it's the, you know, it's the shaking the snow globe. You have to shake the snow globe to see what settles, right? Yeah. And then you, you look at the patterns that are there. And, and most of all, like, this is the, in any creative profession, you know, we've faced this with clients over the years. It's that clients think that you show up and then you put a bunch of ideas out or you have an interaction and then, and then all of a sudden, boom, the creation machine poops out a solution. Right. Well, <laughs> well, a lot of creative process is doing nothing. You take in, you, you spend a lot of focus taking in all of the input, right? Mm -hmm. Especially your experience design. Yeah. And then you sit on it for a couple of days because you have to just, time. You just yeah. have to allow all of the possibilities to percolate, right? Because, yeah. you, and then you come back and start designing. You can't, you can't design immediately after you take in all the input. It's impossible. Exactly. And because, it is so hard. I'm sorry, I just cut you off. It, it's so hard to, yeah, when people have that expectation of creative people and it just doesn't work that way. And, you know, that I always felt like that was what made Ken and I work well together was, you know, I'd kind of moved beyond the hands-on design by that point of starting to work with him, but I knew how to build time. I knew that I needed it when I was more hands-on designing, right? I needed 
soak time or process time, time to like, just kind of really understand the whole problem you're trying to solve. And like you said, formulate different paths and avenues, and then kind of focus in on the one or two that you think might be the best path for this particular project or client. And, you know, with, with Ken, it was great because I could, I could be the in-between, right. The in-between the client and the in-between the designer where I could build in that time, um, upfront and communicate. You never have to say, well, we're not, we're not doing anything for these three days. <laughs> it's like, you just have to know how to communicate it, but it's such an important part of the design process that is so often left out in commercial projects and, you know, digital projects, that being my, my past life, you know, it's just, you do need that. You need that time to soak and process and feel and feel. feel feeling. Yeah. And yeah. it's the same in our own life process. We, if we're hanging on to all of these habituated ways of thinking, all those habituated ways of thinking lead to judgment, right? Right? Is this right? Is this wrong? Should I be doing this? Is this isn't what I did last time? This is what I did last time. So how am I going to get a different right? So all of these things, all of this habituated thinking thoughts, they lead to judgment. And if we can free ourselves from the judgment, then we can feel what's right, right? We can feel our way to what's right. Yeah. Instead of hanging, because what's right may be a totally different path that we have never seen or that we have only maybe imagined in the tiniest of ways, right? There may be a little nugget of inspiration we had 10 years ago or five days ago or who knows. And that, uh, and in order for that to germinate, you need to be free to see it and to feel it. And that's the, that's the trick, right? Again, we're back to that trick of being present so that we can feel because feeling is the way you know you're in the flow, right? It's the way you, feeling is the way you know that you let something go. Yeah. Right? Unless you're hooked up to a biofeedback machine, but <laughs> you can't run around, you know, maybe someday we'll have, well, actually, I'm sure, um, actually, there are, there are plenty of apps out there already that, that are amazing, actually, that will connect to an Apple Watch that will train people when they are in a more relaxed state. Yeah, right. That's true. Yeah. Plenty of there's plenty of technology out there. And that's amazing. The trick is, is how do you just naturally understand that we have that ability right yeah. we have psychic abilities we have very refined emotional abilities and talents and all of those can be used to help us navigate but you can only navigate if you have the soak time the judgment free soak time as you called it yeah well and that right? that is like you need it you need time to process that and let it <laughs> let it marinate i guess and yeah, oh man. No, I love that, that you brought it back around. That's, I also thank you for, uh, I, I do tend to be a little all over the map when I have conversations. So I appreciate that you're able that, to kind of well, bring the it point back of, to us. Well, the point, <laughs> the point, there's a reason this, this uh, thing we're doing is called unconstrained. Yeah, that's exactly okay. what I need. <laughs> Well, it's what I need too, right? It's the, it, it, uh, right. It's, it's the, it is the, it's why there's so much joy here. Like I was really like, I thought it was a mistake actually to wait a week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where I was like, let's try <laughs> once a week for a while. And, and interestingly, like, <laughs> You know, if I can, if I can, I, I could probably break it into doing Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, and make yeah. that work. Um, 
my hesitation in doing that initially was just like, like so many things pop up randomly. <laughs> I'm like, well, do I need to leave space for the randomness that inevitably comes up or should I earmark this time? And maybe it's better to earmark the time. And cause I, I do have to say, looking forward to this week's conversation after last week's has been very um, nourishing to me mm -hmm. both like yeah. I feel like the the positivity that you bring and the optimistic outlook and just logic to things is something that I'm a little undernourished on um in my life in general and so it, and I didn't really realize it until we spoke on the phone you know I I, I think I'd been feeling it but I couldn't quite put my finger on it and then we had that first conversation that we'd had in a while. And it was like, yeah, you know, like I miss that and I need that. And I, you know, I get a different kind of creativity and growth with Ken, who I love very much. And I don't mean to disparage what he brings in any way. It's just different, you know, in, but the positivity and the optimist um, side is very much a, a need a piece of that well yeah thanks i <laughs> like very self-serving <laughs> well no but look it we're it wouldn't be it is self-serving but it's also self-serving for me right we're we're like you know all of a sudden we're on a same wavelength right we're at a place where what I guess what I have found, there's so many things I could say here, but one of the things that applies is that when you, when I have gone to a higher place or a different place of focus with others to this place that where it's more positive, more expansive, more open to believing things that let's say are non-ordinary. Yeah that it is the effect is exponential that it generates power it generates power um that is uh, maybe intangible at first right it's and uh that's one of the the Hawkins things is distinguishing between power and force. Power is capacity, right? It's how much you have on board. It's how much energy is available for any given thing. Force is how you're trying to push on things and affect the world. But that's, um, that's, um, that's like fighting with the world, right? that's working harder yeah not smarter right? <laughs> yeah but what what you want is you want to accumulate the power and the focus to be able to apply it to anything right to keep swimming even faster downstream because the more we swim downstream the more th things we see the more things we get to interact with yeah. we're just standing on the shore we're not really interacting with anything. We're only interacting with what we can see. Yeah. And if you're swimming upstream, you're only interacting with things that you've already seen, right? Yeah. And you're working harder. Yeah. And so that's, and so I, I really, I want to be around more people who are willing to go to this place that's that is unconstrained that has more room for creativity and where it's not about hard and struggle but it's actually putting myself in a like i, I, I don't know if i want to say like-minded but in a more open landscape yeah. with people who are also in that open landscape and also unconstrained and who and again there are moments 
we've had these moments. You, you and I and many of the people we love have had these moments in yeah. our lives. Like, holy shit, this is awesome. This is like everything I can imagine. I am, I feel like, you know, there's moments in my life where I like, I feel like I have six guns strapped on and I'm yeah. like the sheriff. I'm the sheriff of this fucking town. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? I'm right. doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing and everybody around me knows I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. No, and it that, is. And that's swimming downstream. I like that. I like that. I hadn't really thought about that visual before, but I like the visual of that too. It, it's, uh, I feel like it's very in line with some of the internal, um, I don't know, navigation that my brain does is, you know, consumption versus creation, um, how much I consume versus how much I create, but how, you know, like, I, I feel like often as somebody who creates, you tend to shun consumption in some regard, but it's important to take in as much as you put out. It's just being discerning at what comes in, what you let in. Um, but seeing, you know, it's important to see and see and see. And so I love the idea of going downstream because you're you're taking it in, you're taking it in, but also creating along the way, giving back. Um, I like that. Yeah, and also you you the thing is is you don't have to judge any of it. Yeah. You can That's just, true. It's just you can just feel you can just feel what's right. Yeah. You can just you don't need to you, you can right. It's just like this is you know I, I want to feel good regardless of what my right. mind happens to be judging. <laughs> yeah. About the situation, right? It's like, and I may need to leave the room to feel good, but the goal is I want to feel good and I don't I don't even need to judge what's happening I just need to move to the other room or I need to jump back in the river because standing here on you know, <laughs> yep. standing here on the shore look with you going look at that burning bush look at that burning bush look at that burning bush gets old after a while <laughs> right <I> do. <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah I exactly. saw that burning bush and I saw that one 100 yards back too and that car accident over there and that uh client train wreck there I saw all those things yeah but I'm, I'm just gonna keep swimming along I like that I like that a lot and I don't know does that bring us to a good stopping point for today I feel like it's been such a good a yeah good one again I know we didn't have any uh technical problems along the way this time, no technical which was problems nice, which is very nice um, um yeah i think this is fine i um i would just have logistical questions of like what do we want to do with yeah. this because because i would be fine with just publishing it as is okay i don't know if, if have we had any have we had any feedback has ken watched you know no i didn't didn't look at the last one so i'll you know, I'll just put them in a place where you can. But if you'd like, I, I do need to cut the last one together because it was two separate ones oh, yeah. by the time uh -huh. we were done. But um, so, yeah, I think with that and then but maybe. Um, oh, go ahead. We could, well, we could just decide that we're going to put them up. Yep. And we, and we, we can put them up in multiple places. Or the, Yeah. I don't know enough about like. Uh, like getting set up with Apple podcasts or anything like that, you know, the, is that something like, where do they, where do we host them or where do we put them up or out or, Oh, now you're frozen. It just for test test. Hmm? You're frozen. So maybe we, we, we reached our limit. Are you back? <laughs> yeah, now me? I'm back. Let me see. I can hear you for sure. It's just your video. Your video was frozen. Oh, I yeah, can't. yours too. It just like on 
your side. I don't know. It just wasn't, and I couldn't hear anything anymore. It just went whoop. But logistics, logistics, logistics. Wise. Um, yeah, like I don't know enough there goes- about like um do we put these up like to a podcast service like that's a good question i almost wonder if we should just create a youtube channel for it since it's got a video um yeah maybe just this to start and then we can decide the other part because i i just really like um i feel like that could be pretty easy place to start if the quality looks good and Mm -hmm. if the quality doesn't look good we can figure out that part but I love the video element of it too even though yeah yeah my daughter said it's my daughter said said the same thing like I was talking to my daughter that yeah uh, we had done this and she's oh that's great and you know she's like you should post the video because people like watching the video Video, yeah I feel like I I'm more engaged with uh this kind of conversation probably with some video too and Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's let's maybe try that, and I'll um I'll pull last week's and this one, and see if I can get that stuff organized. I'll make that my to do of this week, and uh, see if I can get that side. I might have to ask Ken for some help. Okay, Sorry. and then like I'm gonna just that. look at this maybe this uh, this um, podcast recording service. Yeah. It's like two hundred it's like 200 bucks a year or something like that. okay and does it allow you to edit at all i mean it's it it you do that separately right because it's just recording um, all the pieces and it's recording would... all the pieces but then i don't know what um i don't know what their cloud part you know what the cloud part looks like or what the files are that it generates i don't know any of that okay but there are a number of these, there are a number of these apps out there. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, we're doing our own because we're, because of the, the birder show um, at where next we're doing our own version of this, but it's a lot more complicated because we have multiple cameras. Set yeah. Up and, and we're, we're, uh, we're trying to do like the, uh, you know, the virtual Barbara Walters or Oprah type interview thing where oh, it actually looks cool. like there's an angle and it actually looks like people are talking to each other. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, that's more complicated than what <laughs> you and I We could need. angle our chairs mm-hmm. next time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got to yeah, switch. I can angle mine like this, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, am I, am I going the wrong way? No, I'm... Uh, well, uh, I don't know. I, I actually, I need to change my, <laughs> I need to change my view here because I don't, I don't have the side by side. Okay. I have a side by side, but we were facing opposite. We were facing the same direction just now. We were both know. like, I don't know how to get the side by side. You know what? Uh, for me, I just had to shrink my window. So I don't know. I, hopefully that doesn't, um, oh Dang, moving Let's my see. window. I should have done this bigger We're learning. sooner. We are learning. That's the whole point, right? Uh, this is full screen, but how does this, this see? I just have my thing is just the little, I'm just the little. I'll send. Mm-hmm. I don't know how the setting. I'm more. just doing manual corner drags. Oh, try that. You know what? Because I don't have the app, oh. probably because I don't have the app on mine. But that's the thing, you're recording, so that's fine. Yeah, so it should be all right, right? So I do, that's I need funny. to face this way. <laughs> For next time, you face that way. I'll face this way. And then, <laughs> then I've got to actually figure, actually go the other way. Can you, yeah, you face that way. And then I'll face this way. Now it works. Hold on. I'm going to screenshot this. Uh, four. <laughs> it's better, actually. I'm facing, my, I'm facing my desk lamp, so my face will be lit. I can actually. Illuminated. There. I, I sent you a, a picture. Hey, Siri, turn up the desk lamp to 70%. I just bumped up my light a little bit. So that's what I'll work on next time. My uh, 
saturation or whatever it is brightness settings for my camera because it's I feel like I'm really blown out which is complementary yeah. to the reality of my face but like it's <laughs> it is it is it is really it is very blown out it's like yeah. a modern it's like a modern day wedding photographer style <laughs> where they blow everything out so yeah every, yeah there's but, no everything's super smooth <laughs> but yeah I'm like that's not what my face really looks like there we go a little closer hold on i can see my uh these are always there whether i'm making them or not so <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway i'll work on that see if i can bring a little more reality into the color over here but the browns look nice mm -hmm. anyway all right um, stefan yeah uh, what you I, got i just i think this is great i could do it twice a week um, if we just and and if we just came up with a, a simple system for just you know like the most basic simple way that we can do these yeah. and just keep posting them yeah let's do that that's always just take the noise out of the way that's my way <laughs> yeah like, like it doesn't need to be high production value it just like just do them make yeah. create go 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 yeah yeah and we'll learn whatever we need to learn about it and we'll get whatever feedback we get about yep. it that was definitely something i appreciated with the season that i did of the last the coffee with jamie podcast was that i got feedback and you know people were like well how about this or how about that or people make suggestions and it was nice to kind of experiment and play and then grow in my own way um but from that feedback real feedback was very nice it's very cool. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is this is um, whatever this is, it's beneficial for me, and it's uh, it's um, uh, catalyzing my interest in the more creative, the more expansive yeah. parts of life because that. Again, that's what that's really the only thing that's mattering right yeah. now to me. I can't I, I'm not really excited about <laughs> much any, else. Almost almost anything. Certainly not wiring my trailer hitch. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay somebody for that. <laughs> I know. Oh man. No, I relate to that sentiment fully. And I, I think this is great. So I don't know if you would like to try. Um let me see what it will take to get this sort of out the door um on yeah. my end because it shouldn't be hard it's just i mean it's saving already recording yeah. and saving and then just figuring out how to i and i've used youtube many times before i know it's not that hard so we can just figure oh. that out and then yeah and i i've used youtube a lot yeah because <laughs> we had to set up the birders you know we had to set up the birder yeah. show so maybe that's something just, that we, uh, we look just, at that. Uh, you know, everything from, you know, just the tagging and all of that stuff yeah. to, the, to the, those things I can certainly do. And then even just the thumb, you know, like you put a thumbnail with a title on it. Yeah, exactly. And that part, I never got that into. I just let, took a frame, <laughs> but no, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's take it. You know, our next step is now posting and, uh, yeah, packaging. Packaging. All right. Well, thank you so much for this uh, moment. Likewise. And unless we uh, change it to sooner, Tuesday for sure. Uh, okay. Sweet. All right. All right. Take Cheers. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.